Hi everybody and welcome to Dryer Days Art Studio. I'm Catherine and I'm so happy to have you here. This is the geode that I will be working on today and this is part two of a two-part series. You can catch the first part down in the description. Uh, there's a link or at the end I will post a link as well that you can click on. I am a little congested. I'm sorry I'm having an allergic reaction to something so please bear with me. This epoxy sculpt, I mentioned this in the other video and I called it clay. Uh, it's a two-part, it's permanent, it's self-hardening. You have to mix equal parts together as I'm doing here and I should have had gloves on. I mean, safety first, should have had gloves on. When I work with resin, I do keep oh, the windows open, well ventilated and um, obviously I wear gloves and I do try to wear a mask or a ventilator. Uh, but here you can see I had mixed these two parts together. I let them sit after I mixed them well. They sat for about five minutes and then I applied them to my MDF board. This MDF board is about three quarters of an inch thick. I did sand it, primed it twice with gesso, sanded it, and then painted it. I came in at this point and painted my sections so that I had an idea of what kind of colors I wanted where. Coming in here with my first layer of Stone Coat Countertops Art Resin. I love this stuff. I have just recently been turned on to it and I love it. It's great. Highly recommend. And if you check out the video description, you could find where to find Stone Coat Resin. I will link their website and all other tools that I use you can find in the description of this video. The white that I am using is actually white base tint by Stone Coat Countertops that you can find on their website. And I really like the white. You get great cells with it and lacing, so I highly recommend. I did create a border around the entire shape of the crescent moon with masking tape, and that is to essentially keep the resin in place. Um, I do, after I'm kind of done setting down all my resin where I want it, I let the piece sit for two and a half to three hours, and then I come in and I will remove that tape around the edges and lightly hit them with my heat gun to loosen the resin up. And then I will just kind of blend it into the sides. And that is so I am getting coverage around my sides without losing the shape and all the work that I just did before. I find two and a half to three hours later, it, it's hard enough that it's not going to move too much on you when you remove that tape. Thank you. 
even though this is part two, I learned a lot in this one that I applied to part one, uh, The Brown Moon, which I recommend you watch that one too. Uh, like I said, I would have probably glued those stones in first. Um, as this dries, the stones do pop back up out of the resin, but I would have liked to kind of had them down first and probably in with the hot glue. Um, also, for some reason, I did not record putting in the second layer of resin. You'll uh, kind of see the after effects here in a few, but I do apologize. However, if you want to check out part one, you will see how I do uh, about 24 hours later, a second layer of resin and how that just really adds to things and dimension. So after 24 hours, I retaped my edges and I was hip to the glue gun technique at this point. Uh, but again, because I did it as an afterthought, that silver glitter really stuck to that semi-dry resin and I ended up having to almost like scrape it off of the piece, but it did come off okay. But just adding a lot of work for myself that if I had just done this in the prep stage, but like I said, lesson learned, and I definitely know to do this first next time. I showed this in part one, but just wanted to show it here, how nice it is if you do that prep work and lay that blue painter's tape down. Uh, everything just comes off really nicely and you don't have to sand anything off. I do recommend peeling this off between 48 and 72 hours or it will become rock hard and you will have to sand it off. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I recommend you go over and check out part one. I'm sorry you had to listen to me so congested, but I hope you got something from this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Come check out my Facebook group, Acrylic Pouring and Fluid Painting, and find me on Instagram at Dryer Days. And until next time, keep on pouring. <laughs>